The Grip It and Rip It Disc Golf is an LLC that I formed in 2012 to do course design, event management, and instruction for, for disc golf. I've either been the sole designer or the lead designer or a collaborator on 15 disc golf courses in Western Pennsylvania and West Virginia and now Ohio. The more you can tell yourself positive things, the less chance you have, less space there is in your head to let in the doubts and the second thoughts. Disc golf course design is both an art and a science, and uh, it, I've had uh, you know almost 30 years of experience designing courses, playing courses. A professional course designer, I think, is an, a very valuable use of, uh, of a park's budget in order to create a course that's challenging for multiple levels of play, uh, both championship level and recreational, uh, that's safe um, and sustainable. It's something that can be, you know, improved and last for a long time. Thanks for watching and if you want to contact me about disc golf course design or event management or instruction, you can reach me at gripitrippitdiscgolf.com. Everybody, here we are, PFDO 2019 Final Nine coverage. We've got Vince Mock and Brian Bowman here bringing you commentary from my living room to finish off our uh, our evening of uh, disc golf here. Hopefully you took an hour and a half and just sat down and watched these all in sequence. Good on you. Um, so we, uh, we had some good moving and shaking for our... Uh, front nine and back nine of the final round here at Knob Hill Disc Golf Course. If you haven't watched that, please do yourself a favor and go back and watch those before watching this. There's some serious spoilers, there's things that happen, um, but for those of you who are here already, welcome, and we're going to we're gonna get to it here. So we're going to have a little bit of a change from our grouping from the first round. We've got Justin Gilbert from Hamburg, New York. Uh, joining us at uh, even we have BJ changing his shirt, which is wise considering that it's probably uh, warm outside And then we've got Nate coming in at two under and Aaron still hanging on to his lead By one little stroke and we've got a mixed layout here from the white tees. It looks like for yeah the final our, nine. our final nine for all the marbles We're gonna go from the middle tees, which are the white tees We're gonna change it up a bit and you are gonna see that these shots are Considerably different in a lot of cases here. Uh, so we got even and one, two, three down, four strokes total uh, separating, or excuse me, three strokes total separating the whole the whole group here. And uh, Bud Hearn is going to be our course official and scorekeeper for the final nine. Uh, keep everybody in line. He's good at that kind of thing. He very much is. If you if you step one inch out of line. <laughs> You better just watch it. And if you know Bud, you know that's a joke because Bud's a really fun little <laughs> guy. Got a little gallery out here following us. Uh, so everybody's done with their rounds from both courses, all of the divisions. Uh, able to come out and watch the final nine. We'll see the gallery grow as we go along. So, jo Yeah, Aaron uh, has been just dominating this hole with the forehand. Uh, this time he left it a little shorter than the other two rounds. He's circle's edge. Um, and you can see that you're not downhill on the tee as you are from the blue tees you're actually looking uh pretty flat right it oh, no. takes away some of the difficulty so uh yeah nate out of the way bobcat <laughs> yeah nate uh turned his drive over a little bit you just want a straight uh thumber or forehand that's going to get you mm. hysering down to the right bj just catches cabbage early and justin who it looks like is uh with prodigy disc oh yeah <laughs> very much so um throwing a nice smooth forehand that looks like it'll skip a little bit, and he'll be edge of the circle looking at a death butt down the hill. It's hard to get a skip there. We've had so much rain, it's been so muddy, and then mm -hmm. the mud dried up, so it's very ruddy there now. Um, it, it's crazy, all these guys got closer from the blue tee, <laughs> so switching it up to the white yeah. tee may have thrown them off their game a little bit here. Well, you really, I mean, you're, you're used to playing a certain set of shots, and then all of a sudden you got to change it up, so uh, yeah. it makes sense. BJ trying to step one up there. He's going to be putting for par. 
Justin, as you can see, is our young guy on the card. Uh, mm-hmm. He's out of Buffalo, New York area. We see him down here in Pittsburgh pretty often. Uh, clearly, being this young and shooting advanced, he's got some skills and he's got some confidence. Uh, he threw that putt like he really wanted it. Uh, unfortunately, just yeah. caught it a bit low. Uh, last time I saw him was at Can-Am Cup up in uh, western New York mm. last summer. And uh, throws far, puts hard, and definitely has a uh, an impressive skill set for a younger player. Yeah, yeah, Aaron. Though Aaron currently has the most impressive skill set with that <laughs> with that made putt compared to everybody else. It's a nice birdie to pad his lead a little bit by an extra stroke. Yeah, and Aaron was saying uh, after the round that he started out uh, one of his first tournaments was here in Pittsburgh two years ago playing rec. So in two cool. years, he's gone from doing good in rec. Uh, to doing great in it uh, in advance, and I'm pretty sure I played around with him back when I was a rec player. I haven't gotten any better, so props to him. He's yeah. Up. <laughs> I was gonna say it must be nice because uh, I'm I'm better, but I'm not that much better. <laughs> I'm better than I was, but not as good as I'd like to be. I mean, most of us could probably say that, but yeah. And uh, and you know, it's good to see too, like BJ and Nate giving him a high five as they go to clean up their pars. Um, we've got a really great scene down here in Pittsburgh. Everyone's really positive. BJ's always got something nice to say. Nate is one of the more fun people you can play with. Always is just kind of light and bright, goofing around in a, mm-hmm. in a good way. Yep. So now we're going to move on to hole two, shortened down to 257 feet. You still got to play through the first tight gap and get something turning to the right or fading to the right if you're throwing a forehand, um, but not going too far so that you can check up near the basket and have a putt. Exactly. You'll see we don't have that obstruction on the right and this bush to our left is much closer so it's kind of out of play uh that oh that looks so good <laughs> that looked perfect that was the line if you get to either side of that tree you're gonna be really nice <laughs> nice little putter forehand nate's going putter backhand turning over the rhino not as much as turnover oh. as he'd like but Wow. That I, caught a tree. Yeah. I was going to say, it must have caught something because it looked like it was fading left. BJ with the thumber, as he is wont to do. <laughs> hit, hit one of the last trees. Uh, he should be a little outside the surface edge. Not bad at all. Justin going back to the forehand. Nice follow through. That's the side of the tree, and you'll see there you need that such distance control because he's going to be outside of the circle a little bit long and right. Uh, so hard to get it into the gap you needed to and then have it hit the ground and stop. Right. So he's in kind of like that creaky mud bed kind of thing we got going on back there. Boy, Man. does he throw that hard. Holy crow. Yeah. Willikers. Will- Willikers he throws hard. Aaron... <sighs> I'm getting a little nub hill, a little low. I do like that phrase. We're going to use that. We're going to use it. It's a thing now. Hill. Hashtag nub hill. Hashtag slob hill when it's really nutty. Yeah, slob hill. <laughs> oh, geez. A little low again. Fortunately, we didn't have full on slob hill. This part is dry, which can get mud. pretty much the whole course will be a mud pit if it's really bad. Luckily, you guys did have really good weather. Yeah, for first stretch of nice weather we have had in weeks, actually. Right, really. I mean, it's been very rainy. Yeah, Nate. Capitalizing on that kick that I think he had with a nice birdie to, to move him back within one of uh, Senator Theodore. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody uh, else will just clean up. BJ with his par. And I'm going to give a shout out to BJ Ryer because as I mentioned last video, he's one of the course supervisors at Deer Lakes. And that guy has put in so much work in the past three weeks. And here we are uh, on to hole three at Knob Hill, uh, playing from the white tees. Uh, if you remember from the blue tees, we were back and kind of shooting uphill. This is uh, back up on the level, and it is a still a par four, and uh, while it is short, it is very difficult to hit the line that you'd like. Uh, Nate's gets a little low and a kick up to the right. He'll be on the top side of the fairway, kind of looking down at the basket. And BJ lining up a thumber, kicking down to the front edge of the uh, the OB there. Not the OB, geez, the rough. Yeah, the rough. <laughs> Justin, that's high, that's left, Ooh. and now he's waving bye bye to his uh, frisbee. Wow, that is deep. Uh, yeah, that's in the stuff. 
And Aaron is going to try to go the whole way down the center and ooh, almost makes it the whole way down through the the army of guardian trees. Yeah, that unfortunately doesn't. That's still lower than you want to be. Like you really want something that pushes up towards a pin yeah. and then fades, not is low and then fades. Ooh, stop. Too good. Yeah, he got a bit of a skip on the top flight plate there. It's going to put him outside of the circle. Uh, about circle two's edge coming back at the basket. Aaron going right at it, but just catches the last of the two trees that he needed mm-hmm. to get inside of or outside of. Nate is looking down from behind a pin. He's going to need something that kind of makes an S shape to get around this first tree and then come back. But doesn't really get the comeback that he wants to. That Omega Super Soft is pretty beat in. Mm-hmm. Ooh. So, Justin's looking high. So maybe he has, like, an up-in-the-air gap that he can work with. Yeah, he's going to have to get over some bumbling trees. And That's die. impressive. Yep, perfect. This is Aaron's uh, birdie shot, I believe. Yes, for Birdie going down the center and puts it right dead center. Man, he went over the little dead tree, Annie around the regular tree. No doubt, dead center the whole way. Yeah, that's just an, a well-deserved yeah. high five from Nate because that was an incredible yeah. Anheuser putt. Folks often bring up, oh, uh, when this is in, a, in B pin or A pin, maybe it shouldn't be a par four. Eh. But as you can see, one tree and you are... In danger of, you know, an easy bogey. A pin, maybe. B pin, no. Yeah. Like, you really got to do something special from the white or the blue tee to get all the way down. It's just such a tight, pinched off line. Yeah, a guy on my card uh, had never played the course before. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Stepped up, threw a perfect flexi shot that Flair skipped directly into the side of the basket. He was inches from an ace on this, which is... Such a hard line. <laughs> yeah. I feel like sometimes, like, if you get in the right mindset playing blind, you can do things like yeah. that that you wouldn't do knowing. Because you don't have any expectations. You're just like, well, I'm just going to throw a disc. Yeah. So we had three birdies there. Uh, BJ, the only one pulling in with a par mm-hmm. on hole three. And now we're going to skip ahead, follow the path down to hole 12. Yeah, and hole 12, you'll remember, is a par three with a slight bend to the right up the hill at the end. And now that we're a little closer, these players um, can throw a more controlled forehand or a mid-range in this case. And Nate doing work with that MD3, flexing it up the hill very nicely, getting it to settle. And yeah. he'll have a nice uh, putt there for birdie. And uh, Justin here wow. just turned that over maybe a little bit and ends up catching a tree there towards the end of his flight. But I think that would have been skipping right up into the uh, yeah. into the sweet spot there if he'd gotten full flight. Kid's got some power. Yes, he does. <laughs> We've got our... That looks like the line. Woo-hoo. Whoa! Oh. oh, geez, and then gets a roll. That would have been a super... So, I, I hear tell from the camera guys that they had no idea that that rolled away. They all thought that he was sitting there parked. Oh, no. So, a spoiler, uh, spoiler for him when he gets up there. It's, it's going to have a bit of that knob hill roll away. Uh, BJ hits the group of trees that if you don't hit the trees on the left, mm-hmm. you hit the trees on the right, or you make the gap. Right. So he and that, hit the left. that hurts because that was, that was so, so pretty. Yeah. Almost acing. But, I mean, the hard pan in the hillside sloping down towards um, whole... 11's tee shot. <clears throat> Justin, Uh-oh. just a little high. He's been off the band two or three times, even in just this short yeah. uh, final nine so far. He's really hunting it just a, just a skosh off. And I'm going to say he's getting pretty lucky that he has not had a roll away for how hard he's hitting the band. Nice, maybe right? maybe that's the key is you have to hit it so hard <laughs> that, it that it just down. smashes your disc <laughs> to the ground and it doesn't have the ability to yeah. roll. I don't know. I'm taking notes over here, Justin. I'm taking notes. So we got a couple of comebackers. Aaron had a great run. Knob Hill. Nub Hill. Yep. Uh. <laughs> no roll away, though, so uh, that's good. And now we finally get up to Nate, whose drive is inside the circle. 
slightly downhill, about half as downhill as he was last time. <laughs> Clutch. Putter is still on today. That birdie is going to be a birdie on a lot of the field. Uh, well, uh, these guys didn't play for the white tees for the other rounds, but rest assured, it's tough for the white tees as well. It definitely <laughs> is. You really, again, have to control a turnover like he did, or you have to get a, a forehand that is, is moving straight for most of the flight. Yeah. And then not finishing so far like Aaron's. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah, it's a touchy shot. There's a lot of factors you need. To so we're gonna see Nate take the lead there at five under, and Aaron dropping down to four, BJ at even, and Justin at one under. Moving to hole 13, where we had that long, long turnover that had to go straight for most of the flight after you turned it. Now we're gonna be halfway up that fairway, basically, from where we were before. And it is still a turnover, and that is a bad shot. Oh no, Nate. That is the one one of the mistakes. There's several mistakes you can make. You could you could let go early and kick off left like that, or you can overturn it and end up across the creek, which is OB. Yeah. Gilbert ripping up on something that just isn't gonna flip the way he wants it to, but hopefully he'll drop on the edge and he'll actually be able to approach from there. Yeah, he told me he likes to throw X ones, and for how stable that shot looked, I'm gonna guess that might have been the X one. Wow. I mean then he really just didn't get the Anheuser he wanted. Yeah. Because if you're going to turn over an X1, you really got to throw with some Anheuser yeah. to get it moving to the direction you want it to yeah. on this hole. DJ just flipping out at Thummer. Yeah. I think everybody wanted to get as close as they could to the pin and just, you know, just it's getting late in the day. You get a little tired. You right. get a, you, a little premature snap on it, you know. Ah, uh, <sighs> Difficult. Yeah. That's the center fairway guardian tree there. Fatigue is definitely a factor. After two blue rounds at Deer Lakes, a blue round at Knob, mm, you take a tree. break, and then you try to go back out and get warmed up and get back in the mode, and it's it's difficult. <laughs> and Boy, Nate's looking at a lot of grabby stuff for an aggressive forehand. We'll see how this plays out Yeah, for what him. line is he even looking at? What are you thinking, Nate? What are you doing? Turn around and tell us right now. <laughs> I know you can do it. You can hear me. Well, he hit a line, and that looks like it's that fading OB. found a creek OB. Oh, geez, you have to bad. miss a lot of trees to get from where he was to where the OB is and not hit something. That really sucks. Oh. Whoa, no! <laughs> <laughs> Almost <laughs> skipping it up and in, touching the chains. I'm going to say if there were no nubs on that basket, that would have went in. Nub hill, man. <laughs> man, he's loving that. Oh boy, and Nate, yeah, is is all the way down by the creek, out of position. Wow, he got so far down there. He's like pin high. Oh wow! Off to the right. Never mind. He's just way the heck. He's way further down than I thought he was. Still not where you want to be. You don't you don't want to have to take extra strokes out here if you don't have. Yeah, to. he was like pin high with a pin, and to go OB he would have had to. Wow, that's bonkers. So it was a far shot. Just Great not shot, the control, Nate. Right? Yeah, not the control he wanted. A little, uh, little touchy Kaiser flip putter. Right on top of <laughs> of the other disc. Yeah, yeah. sliding over uh, BJ's like neatly died. <laughs> and that's a decent bogey save there. Yeah, he's really happy with that. I mean, I would be too. I've been over where he was, and I usually just try to pitch out to the mud pit. <laughs> right. Nice par. Again, this is a par four. Um, it doesn't change from blue to whites. Uh, I would say this is a fairly easy three for these guys from this tee, so everybody's kind of looking to birdie it. And uh, Justin does get the, the lone birdie near Eagle, almost skipping in his forehand approach. Uh, that was pretty cool. Yeah, so he's made up some strokes here on BJ. Um, Taking the lead over BJ, and we got Aaron and Nate tied at four down uh, with just a few holes left to go. Right. So now we're moving into hole 14. We've got a uh, a big hyzer off the tee. Maybe not quite that big, though. Justin pulled it a little right. You really want to push towards that big dead tree yep, and, have it, right and have it break right before it. Exactly. 
so that it can hyzer down the fairway. Going with the big turnover forehand again. He liked that last round. I think he was a little tighter this round. Yeah, I'm not. I don't know. I don't know if he's really just trying to get close to the pin. I think he's hoping that it flexes out and gets down there because that's really the shot if you want to get it the whole way there. But I it's guess tough. so. I, yeah, that seems like. I mean, I don't know his game, and I don't know what he's comfortable with, but that seems like a lot to try to bite off. Yeah. Like, you could just do this. You just throw a hyzer. Well, he went the tree. <laughs> Holy crow. Wow. Yeah, so if you hit it, if you hit the hyzer hard, you can end up in the gut there and just have a straight approach to the basket. Uh, since Justin is short, he's got to try to work a forehand either over or past past in this case all of the guardian trees and it's tough to leak through there and get down towards the basket yeah so it's like a horizontal row of trees that follows you there and you just mm -hmm. gotta hope you get through a gap and with the mud up there there's really not a lot of a chance for a skip unfortunately which you know Ooh, just stick straight into the Aaron really the needed the skip there <laughs> oh no here we see BJ. He's off to the right side of the fairway. Really not in a great position, but I'm guessing with a thumber that he's going to be able to park yeah, the hole. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, and now this is some of the worst footing on yeah. the course here. Just so he jumping out of the standstill stand hot putt. That's smart. Great. Don't try to do too much. Nate's way up in there. He can He's running it. Give it a half go. Hopefully that sits, 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 sits. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you might as well, I guess. Final yeah. nine. Tied for the lead. Make something happen. Give the, give us a show, Nate. Yeah, it's time to make moves. So let's see if Justin can hard putt this way in here. A little low that time. Mm. Well, so he's trying to correct. Ends yeah. up with a leaner, which I, I appreciate. Don't keep making the same mistake. I just want to point out how pretty this green is. I really like it. Kind of make, makes me feel like I'm up at the Beaver State Fling. <laughs> yeah, with all of the foliage and the, the baskets kind of like right in the middle of a mother log. Um, yeah. It's it's a very like Pacific Northwest kind of vibe. Nate giving the big shout out for his par there. I'm not sure he was exactly as happy as he looked with it, but he'll take it. No, he definitely, at this point, with only a few holes left to play, three holes to be exact, I think he really wanted the uh, the extra uh, lead there. Yeah. Especially going to hole 16, which is a very steep 50 or 60 straight straight feet up the hill, um, 241 uh, distance to the basket, and then a hard-breaking backhand hyzer to get all the way over to C-Pin. There's a lot of things with this shot. Yep. that you need to do to get it to uh, give yourself a chance to score. So he, he, I'm sure he was thinking about that when he was trying to make that putt on the last hole. Yeah, and we're playing the same tee as we have the other rounds here, uh, just for ease of play. It keeps the course moving as opposed to the white tee. And if you want to see a great shot on this hole, that was it. That was excellent. Uh, really, you're only going to be uh, get it any closer by getting lucky and getting some extra ground play. Let's see what the kids got here. He's got some stuff ah. and some things. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so he's up behind that protected that protected set of trees. Uh, anywhere lower on the hill, and those trees aren't really in play. So he actually, I wouldn't say he pumped it too long, but uh, he put himself behind really the only trees on the green up there. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that we contend with. Aaron looking at that green destroyer, I think. Mm, what just, a tiny jerk tree. Yeah, just pops him down the hill a little bit, but stays in bounds, which is good. And Nate is changing his frisbee here. I think maybe before he had a firebird, and now it looks like maybe a T-bird. I think he throws T-birds. I believe that is his orange T-bird, yes. So he's changing his disc selection. We'll see if that changes his play a little bit. Maybe a destroyer. We'll see how it finishes. Uh, that looked like a T-bird flight. And yeah, Still wow. leaking right, but at least it didn't kick him straight back OB this time. Yeah, he probably got as far right as he did forward off the tee there, unfortunately. Yeah, that's rough. Aaron really likes these touchy forehands. Well, I thought that was going to be touchy, but he sure powered it. Holy cow. Bad tree kick. 
He's going to be low, looking up at the basket, trying to save par there. Uh, at a time when he's tied for the lead, you definitely want to be closer than that. And yeah. Nate's got a lot of work to do from over here. <laughs> yeah, he's almost in the 18th fairway. But that is an excellent shot. Yeah, that was really good. Right up over the, the grade of the hill. Hopefully he sat and will have a putt. Wow. Yeah, you can see he didn't get a lot of forward progress on that last up shot here. Yeah, he's really going to have to scramble here and make something happen. We've only got a few holes left. Hmm. Decided to change his disc. Switch it up. Kind of on a knee, stretching out. But matches the angle hillside yep. perfectly. Nice approach. So Gilbert's going to a knee. And he's got to go through, I'd say it's about a two and a half foot wide gap. Probably twice the width of his frisbee. That was and nails it. He's creeping. He's yeah. got to better watch out. I was standing right behind him there looking down the cap he had to hit. And it was basically, if you if you got the right height on it and went through the trees, it was going to go in. But right. and it, but you had, but to, you had to do side. exactly that. Yeah, a few inches to either side, and he would have rolled down the hill for sure. Wow. So Nate's looking at a pretty pretty steep uphill putt. Oh, no. That's one of the first real missed putts we've seen from him today. Uh, he had good confidence on it, just an inch too low. 14 and 16 now, because yeah. 14, he had, that, he had that close chance. For a birdie, maybe just kind of getting in his head a little bit. Great putt for birdie from BJ. That was excellent. I guess when you put it that close, it's a little easier. I mean, two birdies <laughs> in this pin position, that is uh, severely impressive. Yeah. Just an easy tap in here for Aaron. Ooh! Ooh. Living on the edge. Prodigies. <laughs> I'll keep you honest, that's for sure. So yeah. we got a three-way tie. And a bogey from both of our leaders. A three-way tie with, <laughs> G with BJ. One stroke back. It is anybody's game, folks. And now we're moving again to our, our signature hole at Knob Hill. Hole 17, par 3, 253. Just throw your favorite putter over stable mid down and uh, dream about an ace. BJ looks like maybe he yanked that a little right. That wind really pushed him back, yeah. uh, but it also pushed him long and not where you want to. He wanted redemption on that from last round. I could feel it. And he's he's not going to get it with that, unfortunately. That looks like a great line. Woo! Ooh, still a little long. Giving it a bid for the ace though, so that's the risk you run if you really want to buzz the basket. Yeah, whoever puts it close here, I mean, could really take the lead pretty easily. And is that, yep, wide enough to hit the knob. <laughs> but, I mean, he's in the circle. Got a putt. And he's just going to go stand still because he's got, he's got a crap ton of power. That's all he needs, really, to control. Uh, Ooh. Didn't Maybe get to see that in the air, but the... Uh, the wind pushed it and pushed it and pushed it. <laughs> yeah, he's most of the way to the road. And you can see it is windy and it had some flutter on it there. A few fluts, as the uh, as the big sexy commentary likes to say. <laughs> BJ's too just is Again. floating up there in the air. But at least he'll he'll be able to just drop in his par and, and move on. He won't have the nightmare that he had last time around. This this kid's got a pretty aggressive spin on his yeah. putt, so let's see if he can cut through the wind here. Uphill, hyzer putt. I'm going to guess he's going to run it. Ooh. Just comes out a little low. Follow through yeah. right towards the cage. Uh, didn't really ever give it a chance. Needed to throw that a lot higher. Yeah, I think he was having to play some wind there, mm -hmm. and it was switching up pretty quick, so that might have affected him. Definitely. Mm. Oh boy, this basket! I mean, somebody put a spell on this thing because <laughs> it just does not want to catch. Does not want to catch putts. Everybody here is uh, just going to tap in. Hopefully. Okay. Yep. We got one part. Put it in the chains. It'll go in. Oh, we got a we got a nice hats off to the folks up at Tournament Central up on the hill there. 
that's one of the, I guess, fun things you could say, or, or, or punishing things about Nob is usually turning central is all the way at the top of the hill on 17. Mm -hmm. So after you finish your round, wait, we're just going to hike up the hill a few extra times. And we actually had a uh, chain come undone here. Uh, oh, I, I, I saw <laughs> that when I was playing casually the other day. It's yeah. that, the inner ring. Anyway. Yeah, so last group to play on it, they didn't need to fix it. And now we're into hole 18, still with a three-way tie. Long, straight fairway shot, OB the whole way down on the left. Um, I'm going to guess all of these guys are going to throw it as hard as they can mm -hmm. and try to be able to see that basket uh, to pull out a birdie here. Boy, but with a ripping headwind, you really got to make sure if you're throwing something stable, you do not want to leave it high and you do not want to hyzer out left. If you're throwing something understable, you don't want to turn it into a throller. And this is what I was saying before. BJ, you got this great yep. thumb or forehand. Use it. Put yourself in the middle of the fairway. Get up the hill. You know, I like that correction. From the past round, Gilbert's got a D1. Those things are stable, and that's really stable. Yeah, and look how that wind just turned it over. He's up, up above the knob up there. Wow, <laughs> wow, all the way up over the knob. That's yeah, that's that's a huck. To and keep an Anheuser in the air high enough to get up the hill yeah, is very difficult. There. That's a stable shot, and this is probably what I would do: is just throw a forehand. Boy, that's getting pushed around though. Yeah. Hopefully that sits. Yeah. Yep. Center Nothing cut. wrong with that. That's a good position. Uh, Nate's got a killer backhand, so let's see what he can do here. He can get it there. He definitely can get it there. But just like Justin's, as soon as that flight plate got exposed, uh, it's kind of pushing it to the right with the headwind. Right. He's a little short of Justin's, I believe, but in a similar spot. And you know, that approach from the top side is touchy because you just the basket yeah. is right past the knob. You do not have a lot of room to slide it in, so you got to put it exactly on the angle that you want mm -hmm. to get it to settle down. And Nate is way up past uh, 16's red Ooh. tee. That's hard to see. He was going towards the basket, but it's really hard to get it to stop there. Uh, so if he right. did, we'll see when we get up there. And this there. is what I'm saying is you can barely see the top of the band. You just want the disc to almost slide right over the top of the knob like that. And he's jumping because he, he probably almost made it, and it's just going to settle right there. That's really what you want, is you want to just skim the grass on the knob, slide down by the basket. If you give it too much air, you're going to go down the hill. Justin, get out of the way. Come on. <laughs> Killing me. Yeah, that was a great run. It looked like it was going in the whole way. Uh, and you can see how far Nate went down the yeah. hill here with the roll away. He's a little bit. 40 feet out where we thought he was 10 feet out. Yeah, a little bit of extra height. That's what you're gonna. That's what you're gonna end up with. BJ went long with his thumber. Uh, it's very easy to go long because again, there, it's almost like a optical illusion mm -hmm. on how far you need to throw it. If you go past the basket, you're probably going into these woods. Run the putt. Great run. You might as well. I mean, gotta make something happen here. This is it. We got a cicada floating past the lens. Yeah, and uh, so Justin's lining up his birdie putt, uh, which would technically give him the lead here. And technically, he's got the lead. Smashes it in. And we see uh, Aaron is not too far away there. Um, so he's this is to, to tie, then. Yeah, this is to tie it. Tie and force a playoff, right? Yeah. Because they'd be the two. That'll do it. So we at least got two in, two in the playoff here. We know that BJ is uh, he's going to put his in here for par. Nate is also looking at a par, so looks like the two out of town boys have uh, kind of pulled it away from our local our local group here, which we're fine with that. We love having these guys come into town and uh, play our courses and show us how it's done. Oh, we got a little trick shot there, yeah. yeah. So yeah, we we want to see the best golf possible. Um, we don't mind if it happens to be someone who's not from Pittsburgh. So yeah, now we got a playoff. <laughs> Great. If you win the PFDO, you're an honorary uh, Pittsburgher, as our buddy Brian Keegan was saying. So we'll see if one of these guys can join the Berg with us here. <laughs> so yeah. we're going to go to 17 for the first playoff hole play. 17, 18, 16 in a loop. Ooh. Ooh. Almost got a double skip. Double ace. skip ace. <laughs> but then wow. we got a roll and a sit down and another little roll. Uh, so, so 
He's in about the same position as he has as he was uh, last last time around. So if Eric can just pipe this close, um, this will be his game here. There's a nice controlled mm. spike angle. I think it was a little sawed off. Yeah, yeah, sawed off and left with that wind pushing the way it is. So That's he, tough. So this is probably a hundred feet. I'd say he went uh, much further than you'd expect. Wow, That's and gives it there. a great run. Yeah. So decision time. Aaron's got to think. What is my percentage from this distance? Um, I'll tell you what the percentage of rolling away is if you miss it. It's pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. So he gives it just like a, <laughs> yeah. a layup, and that's smart. Um, I know Justin has match play experience having played Can-Am, so he kind of gets like some of the strategy of like, well, if your opponent's on the edge, maybe just lay up and force them to make the play, and you might take a hole that way. So um, that, that little bit of a mental edge might come into play here. With and our, on to, uh, yeah. With our uh, playoff here. On to hole 18 again. Justin is going to smash one in. Unfortunately, oh, no. it looks like maybe not as much wind as last time. And he tried to adjust, and it just stayed stable. He is going to be OB. That was a different disc, I'm wondering. It looked like a more stable disc. Yeah. Uh, but he also threw it with more hyzer. So. Yeah, I think he was just trying to make that adjustment from going right last time, and it did not work out for him. Um and then we've oh, got Aaron stepping up. Oh, crow, crow, crow. Need to go back in the back. That looks like it's coming back nicely. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that's far. Yeah, that, that, that was really a crush. Uh, he trusted his disc the whole way. Um, you see a little bit of casual relief here off of the OB. So you can see how uphill the basket is. And uh, you really don't get to look at it from down here too much. <laughs> no, it's and it's up there. Like, that's far. Yeah. I'm going to say 200 feet, maybe. No, not 200, 253. 100 feet out at least. Lays it up on the top side of the hill. He's going to have that downhill putt. And here we see how close Aaron came, but man, he really crushed it down there. Yeah, he would almost be putting at the position there in the woods. Yeah, on C pin. Or be pin. I don't know. I don't. <laughs> I can barely keep track of the pin positions in the course where I am, the course right. promoter, <laughs> much less everywhere else. So, calling for it to sit. Yeah, because that's the tough part of this. Like I said with that green, if you go past the basket, it's probably going into those woods. There's almost no way to avoid it. So Justin can make a par here, which would really put the pressure on Aaron to make his putt and uh, take the win outright. Yeah, circle forward would really help him here. And that's gonna take the pressure off of Aaron a little bit here. He can yeah. just he can just lay up really and take his par and his win if he should if he chooses. So he's asking how many strokes were were you at? Yep. Smart. You always want to know where you're going. <laughs> yep. You want to know where your competitor's at, and that's some. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's you know. That's, we had to remind our advanced champion to uh, put in last, yeah. uh, you know, for well, the fun of it. That's good. To, to, it's good for Justin to remind him and let him know. Yeah. Like, hey, you know, this is your your tapping to get. Congratulations, Justin comes over, gives our camera guy Brian the bump, thanking him for coming out and filming us. Aaron. Uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Aaron. Yeah. Our, our our champion from Ohio, Aaron Theodore. I mean, that's a really incredible... It, it's got to feel really good for him if this is one of his first tournaments playing rec to come back a much, couple years much later, more yeah. skilled player a couple years later to take down the win in a very competitive field. Like yeah. we, have, we have a lot of players come from all over the region to play, and um, that, is a, that is a win he can be proud of. Yeah, and uh, now that he's won, he's an official Pittsburgher. Uh, he thanked our club. He was such a gracious guy. Uh, can't wait to have him come back and try to defend it next year. Yeah, I'll, I'll be looking forward to, to seeing him make it out. So yeah. big thanks to our, our sponsors, Rip It and Rip It Disc Golf, and to um, the PFDO, Pittsburgh Flying Disc, for um, Brian Keegan and Jeff hustling around out there, getting all the coverage. Um, anybody I'm forgetting? No, I think that's everyone. Thanks to all our course promoters. Special thanks to our TDs, Eric Nichols and Lori Merriman. Yeah. They ran an amazing tournament. I heard nothing but good things. Course flow was great. Courses looked great. Uh, player pack was great. Mm -hmm. 
definitely going to come back and play next year, and we'll hope to see you guys there too. So for Brian Bowman and Vince Mock and Disc Golf Examiner, keep banging those chains. The Grip It and Rip It Disc Golf is an LLC that I formed in 2012 to do course design, event management, and instruction for, for disc golf. I've either been the sole designer or the lead designer or a collaborator on 15 disc golf courses in Western Pennsylvania and West Virginia and now Ohio. The more you can tell yourself positive things, the less chance you have, less space there is in your head to let in the doubts and the second thoughts. Disc golf course design is both an art and a science and uh, it, I've had uh, you know almost 30 years of experience designing courses, playing courses. A professional course designer I think is an, a very valuable use of, uh, of a park's budget in order to create a course that's challenging for multiple levels of play uh, both championship level and recreational, uh, that's safe um, and sustainable. It's something that can be, you know, improved and last for a long time. Thanks for watching, and if you want to contact me about disc golf course design or event management or instruction, you can reach me at grippitandrippitdiscgolf.com.